Electronic Church of God of Arizona and the Lord's Care Ministry. Welcome to the Lord's Care Ministry, the third work day of the week, the day that you call Tuesday. It happens to be also primary vote day today, and we're going to pick up early off of here and run down there and cast our vote. It happens to be August 28th of the year 2012. Well, brethren, with that, let's get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry. A year to search for knowledge and truth, day 241 of the year 2012. Today's little study is the purpose of prayer. The purpose of prayer. Brethren, I suggest you write the chapter and verses down that we give you so that you can go back and study the whole context at your own leisure. At the same time, brethren, you can use the pause button down here in the corner to start and stop this video study as we go along so that you'll be able to open up your own Bible, read chapter and verse right along with us. Well, with that said and done, let's get right on over into the purpose of prayer. And to do that, we're going to go to Luke, chapter 11 and verse 1. One of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Prayer is not a normal part of the life of the natural man. We hear it said that a person's life will suffer if he does not pray, but I question that. What will suffer is the life of the Son of God in him, which is nourished not by food, but by prayer. When a person becomes begotten son or daughter of, the, of God the Father, the life of the Son of God is born in him, and he can neither starve or nourish that life. Prayer is the way that life of God is in us nourished. Our common ideas regarding prayer are not found in the New Testament. We look upon prayer simply as a means of getting things for ourselves. But the biblical purpose of prayer is that we may get to know God himself. In John chapter 16 and verse 24 we read, Ask, and you will receive. We complain before God and sometimes we are apologetic or indifferent to Him. But we actually ask Him for a very few things. Yet a child exhibits a magnificent boldness to ask. Our God said, in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 3, Unless you become as little children, ask and God will do. Give Jesus Christ the opportunity and the room to work. The problem is that no one will ever do this until he is at his wit's end. When a person is at his wit's end, it no longer seems to be a cowardly thing to pray. In fact, it is the only way he can get in touch with the truth and the reality of God himself. Be yourself before God and present him with your problems. The very things that have brought you to your wit's end, but as long as you think you are self-sufficient, you do not need to ask God for anything. To say that, prayer changes things. is not as close as the truth as saying, prayer changes me, and then I change things. God has established things so that prayer, on the basis of redemption, changes the way a person looks at things. Prayer is not a matter of changing things eternally, but one of working miracles on a person's inner nature. I pray this feverish, tired worm for those who do not know you, for little children, for all who suffer and watch, 
for the absent, the lonely, the tired, the wayward, the sinful, for your servants who are on the point of faming in their service. Relieve them, O Father. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 19 we read, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. On many a favored vineyard. Psalms chapter 80 and verse 15. The vineyard which thy right hand has planted, and the branch that thou made us strong for thyself. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. Never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. As I asked you times before, go to your library. That library is your own Bible. And dig into it and find out about prayer. Brethren, you will find that if you do not have the Spirit of God within you, He will not hear your prayer. I don't say that. Your Bible says that. And unless you are trying to follow Him and His commandments, a prayer is an abomination to Him. Again, I don't say that. Check it out in your own Bible. It is there. Brethren, if you want to see the kingdom and have eternal salvation as the Father and the Son, then I say get down on your knees and pray to the Lord to wipe you clean of the tradition of men and bring their spirit within you so that you can bow your head and talk to them. They will hear you if you truly want this to happen. And brethren, while you're on your knees, ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of the love letter he sent to you. And that love letter is your own Bible. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for the day. You all have a very wonderful day. I know I will. God willing. We'll see. Email me at 473 at cox.net or check into my webpage at www.fcg82.com backslash h2.htm. Thank you.